It is a tradition of the Shimi Shimi Choctaw Indians to tell a story using their vast imaginations and their mystical wind flutes. I will continue this tradition tonight, except I don't have a wind flute or an imagination. I do, however, have a mouth and a kazoo. And so it begins. I will never forget the Day of the Dead. The night was pitch black and it was raining hard. It was raining so hard it felt like a thousand ghosts were going pee-pee on me at the same time. Perhaps they were. It was definitely a night for spiritual debauchery, and ghosts going pee-pee amongst the land of the living was not out of the realm of possibility. I was standing in the midst of a cheering crowd. They made a complete circle around the theater of battle. It was between me and the two-horned beast. The same beast the ancient Mayans called a bull. Except they probably said it in Spanish. <laughs> the people around me were holding up their money marks and capping out their bets, hoping that I'd make a slip and fatten their wallets. I made a solemn vow that night to not slip, to not dishonor my ancestors. I will not quit the fight until this bull is slaughtered by my honorable sword and muleta. <laughs> Because the alternative is his horns goring the shit out of me. I stared deep into the bull's eyeballs. They looked like two huge... Mm, like two... like two huge... eyes. I could see fire in those eyes. A sacred passion that could only be satiated through blood. My blood! The thought of this made me feel not good. I don't like getting killed and the bull can sense that. He charged me. <laughs> His twisted horns miss my tallywhacker by a hundredth of an inch. Oh, One might wonder how I can measure a hundredth of an inch in the pitch darkness of a moonless night. There is only one explanation for this phenomenon. Magic. <laughs> the bull made another run at me. This time I was ready. I held out to Muleta, hoping beyond hope that the bull kept his attention on the red dangling towel. I realized that this hope was a vain hope because the fucker zoomed straight at me and stuck a horn in my inner thigh. It hurt like a son of a bitch. At first, I thought he completely clipped my nutsack, releasing the two balls that reside therein. I can picture my de-sack nuts dangling by their vein threads like a couple of beetles hanging on for dear life on a few wisps of crabgrass during a cold fight hurricane. The thought of this made me want to faint. And faint, I did. <laughs> I woke up three days later in the hospital in searing pain. My wife asked me if I was okay. I asked if my nuts were still attached to my body. We both answered each other's questions at the same time. No, we both answered. I said jinx. And now my wife can no longer speak until I release her from the obligations of the jinx game. And this is how I beat my wife at jinx. The end. Mm-hmm. <laughs>